Um, we had uh, stereo views that I had seen in the past, and and at one time I, I asked, you know, how many stereo views were around is how this started. We showed the first half the last time. Since then, um, I've done some editing. I added some text boxes. The blue are buildings that will be gone. The other text box will be yellow with some addresses, which we didn't have the first time. I'm only showing one view of the stereo view. I changed it all to black and white because some of the original colors are faded and some I had edited and some I hadn't. So we have a single view and then I tried to increase the contrast and clarity. So hopefully that'll show some of the stuff that used to be that's still around. So first one, we might have showed this last time. This house burned. Whoever lives there now, I've seen in the newspapers that that was called Holder's Hill from a businessman that had a store. I don't know who lives there today. But I believe that's the house that's there today on the corner of North Prospect and Elk is the one that comes after this. I think uh, Perkins owned this store at this time. Uh, this is Kathy Lapps, who's got a Facebook page. Uh, Galena Homes Do Tell Stories. That's where she lives. First Presbyterian Church. And when I blew this up, that building and that building, which are not there today, this one is a log building that's in the newspapers that August Mill House tore down when he built the house that's there now. But I know nothing about this beautiful building next to the church, almost right next to it. And then the Wallace building is, that's where the candy kitchen is. This is, and they must be on the New Hall building opposite on the roof, is, is my guess. But look at the detail, you know, the porches, the windows. So everybody oriented? So where the new bank opened up, Gear Street, yes. Gear Street, South Bench, um, the general's house, I guess, where, can't think of the lawyer's name. Richardson lived, Knack, where Knack lived. We're looking back up. Library's right up here. Spring Street Bridge, it shows up, and there's cables you can't see real good. And I think that's probably the second or third bridge over the Galena River at that site. This had to open. So that's why the turnstile is there for the steamboats. We have the Green Street Bridge, which is not there today because of the dike, and that's where the walkway bridge is now. I don't know the official name to it today. Um, this whole area is basically bare now. And a lot of us, uh, well, a lot of us, a few of us when we were growing up, Sanderson's gas station was in that area. But previous to that, there were several buildings. There were uh, several houses. Just a nice view. Uh, do I know? Uh, the stereo views in general were 1860s to 1880s and probably after. My guess, that bridge, uh, the old foundry, which existed for quite a while up into I think the 1930s, a little stone foundation. This burned. I don't have the date right at the top of my hand, but that burned. I'd say it's 1870s, plus or minus 10 years, roughly. No, I had an article the other day on Dewey Avenue. They had electricity on three houses in uh, 1908. They could have had it earlier, but that's just one word popped up that said so-and-so's house have, now have electricity. And the other is those, those houses that are up here, the two or three and the three on the side. The three on the side, I think, are like 1913. And I'm not sure, because one of these is more modern, I think the three on actual bench. But, but that's the area where they were. Those houses are right here. Uh, the old IC Freight Depot, long gone. 
It's now a parking lot. Everybody asked him for parking. Well, we gave them some. And then on St. Michael's, uh, if they ever cut those trees again, is there's a doorway back up on the wall, up two stories, where this actually he could walk into the church. So uh, Barrow's building, now the museum. Harris building, no relation to the steamboat guy, because I was always curious. It was the first Methodist church. Then they built a bigger one and, and um, rented that out. It was also, I think, a Masonic temple at one time, uh, burned around 1898, and the mayor at that time bought it and scrapped all the materials. So um, I can't think of who built the mansion, uh, Fiddick. So Fiddick wanted the land. He paid these guys to move this to what Mike Harris just reconstructed on South High Street. The actual building is still there. When they were remodeling it, I walked in the door, and it had all the uh, IOF symbols on the walls on plaster, which Tom Golden tried to save and took down to where the Masonic Hall is on Bench Street. So they had a beehive. They had a couple axes. And I can't remember the other symbols. Uh, that house is still there. Just the detail, though, on these early photos, stereo views. Yeah, I could never, haven't found an article where that was tore down. That's also in the Joe Davis and Carroll County, County biographical album. There's an engraving of that, and it looks exactly the same in there as St. Michael's Church, the write-up that they have in that, that book. I'm only familiar with Prospect Street through the years. It was a lot narrower than it is today. It's been leveled, filled. The retaining walls from the Washington Street to the Episcopal Church, that's been excavated back because it used to paper right to the road. There's uh, some mention um, on a few more houses from Washington to Fittix, where the retaining wall and the rock outcrops it. That was a narrow spot, and they've excavated into that. I don't think there was a lot of filling that I've seen, but historically, Galena filled in a lot of streets. Uh, there's early records, or they're hauling dirt. Downtown's been filled in anywhere from 10 to 14 feet, depending on where you are. Uh, the biggest depth was at Perry Street, as the original Main Street is 14 feet down. And that might be, everybody asks, how come the river's not as wide there? Well, if we've come up 14 feet and you narrow the channel, because that would have been a wider channel because that, that all flooded. Uh, I knew there was a mine. Um, it's interesting that there's documents in the historical room where people were still digging under Washington Street on the east side under 3rd and Jefferson looking for lead. Uh, did they know there was a mine? Probably, because the Barrow's house was built after everybody's looking for lead. I'm not aware of any quantity of lead that people found in Galena proper. They found pieces. There's articles on the east side when they were digging foundations for houses, they'd dig up lead, but they never found the big theme. Okay, we had that stereo view. Uh, I didn't know which cemetery it was, and I, found, I figured it out three years later, because this is all gone. And these two guys aren't there. And this fence is an interior fence, not the fence on Gear Street. And the vegetation, you got to take that out of your mind. But that stone is that stone. And it didn't hit me, because I've been riding up there the last six years, almost you know every week. That's the exact same monument. Uh, it's Kirby Kittle because we have another picture of him in front of his daughter's grave up here. That's a coffin. Uh, her neighbor's, uh, his maid's a coffin. And they're above ground, but they're limestone. It's in the shape of a coffin. Kirby's the brother to Edward Kittle, I, I believe. Uh, this is S.S. Lorraine. It's a son of... Uh, well, there's another Lorraine up in Division 8. Sherwood S. Lorraine, there's a lot of SSs. There's an SS Brown. There's an SS uh, 
another one. This, I think, is one of the stereo views that I added. Doris Glick had it. And it is fuzzy, but that's the best I could do, is the DeSoto has five stories. Three? Three. Three. So that, that we could date that because the upper stories were removed 1880. Green Street Bridge is you can't see the abutments because of the water. And then this is City Hall. And see if I get it right. There was a hotel on this side of City Hall Park. Park, not Parker. And then in between was, yeah, but it was Grant's Black's Brady. And on the corner was another hotel, Burlington. And then later on, there was a ga the first gas station, which is way before my time. And then Bradner Smith's stable was next to that on Commerce. Power plant, I think, was just to the other side where there's parking now uh, on crafts in between. That was the parsonage at one time. It's not the building that's there today. This is Grant's return from his world tour. That's him. And I assume one of these ladies would be Mrs. Grant, but I, and then for those that are really detailed, you had thought that this popped out to you that the windows are not uh, commemorative. They're not stained glass is what popped out to Janet. Swansea Adams, one of our uh, African-American uh, citizens, longtime resident. Uh, he had other jobs, but he sold water. He had a horse and a little uh, cart. And he'd go down Main Street, and if people were thirsty or whatever, he sold it. He also was a uh, sextant for a church, which I understand might be a janitor, but they mentioned it as a sextant. He also owned a house next to the St. Michael's Church, where the church office building is today. And his house stuck out in the Bench Street a little. It's in the newspaper articles. And when he died, his kids were scattered all over. As the church tried to get the property, which they did, they took his house down, and then they moved the house that's there today back in line with everything else. But he's a longtime resident and was well-liked, according to the newspaper and articles, and respected. Uh, there were wells on various spots through Galena. There was one right here on Spring Street. Uh, I don't know the mechanics. I, I, I'm thinking they were all artesian wells that they might have kept because there was one at Market House. There's one on Broadway up about two or three houses. There's one up on West and Mars Avenue. There was one on Spring Street. Uh, we have a picture of pumps that if somebody's in the pumps, you could figure out how they did it. There was one on Gear Street. There's one on the east side close to where the old waterworks building was. And if we think about it, they had horses. And th there was probably something needed for the horses as they drove their cars, their horses and uh, buggies around town. And then on West Street, um, the people that lived on West Street when I was going to high school, 1970s, that's where they got their water. They didn't have running water on the first three houses on West Street till after the 1970s. And there's other places in Galena, a few that did not have running water till after that time. The Historic Hill Museum has this stereo view. And the DeSoto House has how many stories? And you can't see it real well. But it says, welcome to your home, General, from Galena to the White House. And I'm not going to trend. Galena around the world. That's got a lot of nice detail. The, there's a newspaper article when they built crafts that they had to drive piling below the floor. And it's like 60 or 70. There's a picture in our gazettes. 
showing that they were, you know, all these little pockets before they even put the building up. So that has to be the river bottom or the shallows that they were concerned about. Same uh, time frame, different view up the street, First National Bank or the chocolate chip cookie today or the LC print. I hit, huh? I don't, it's a choo-choo cookie today with the vault. So they load up the, it's like a SpongeBob or a Krabs, Mr. Krabs. You put the formula in the vault for the cookies. Nah, never mind. Sidetrack. Uh, Fecking's building. Um, this was also a cigar factory. Just a nice photo. I, I was curious where they took this from. Because if that's the first National Bank building, the ones on this side are all gone, the ones that used to be brick and four stories high. There was two built by A.J. Jackson, who was the guy that built Grant's home on the east side because it was his house that he donated to the guys that donated it to Grant. It was. Those two slattery buildings were four stories high. Uh, next to the Last Chance Saloon or the Sportsman Tap or the Bait Shop, Rigdon's. These two houses are still there. They might not look as good as this because all the fancier woodwork they don't have. They do have the porches. This is uh, Park Avenue and uh, Jefferson. Park Avenue. Oh, spring? No, spring is way up here. So uh, all the way to the dead end, all the way to Adams. Adams is right up here. Those two houses are still there because the bay, oh, there is no bay window. This has a bay window today. And I don't know current names on people because, as I mentioned last time, I wasn't allowed on the east side, so I don't know who Okay, we're looking back towards the Green Street Bridge, City Hall, Post Office, DeSoto, Crafts, Bradner Smith's Livery Stable. Um, I don't think we've figured out who this bowling saloon was because they didn't give us the rest of the picture and they make it hard on us if it doesn't show up in the... But these are long gone. Uh, there's all kinds of wood, uh, Green Street Bridge, and then I have not found out much. There used to be a hill across the Green Street Bridge. This is Johnson Street. And when the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy came to the east side as they bought that hill for dirt to help build part of their roadway heading down to the Portage. These two nice, look at the four columns were knocked down yeah the whole dirt and and there's dirt from other places when they were building the strohmeyer building on johnson across the street those three buildings uh Sinegers, glessners they excavated the hillside back into uh, off of park they took dirt from there and then i assume that they probably took dirt from other places further down the right away but those are in the newspaper articles too. Uh, you'd have to have something to get it out. And then there's time and effort is it's easier to dig an existing hill with horses and buggy and labor at 50 cents a day than to get a dredge boat, which the city had, which never worked that well, which cost them $16,000 according to the articles to build. Uh, all of our dates are rough. Um, it's an earlier Green Street Bridge, so it's not the one that uh, Jake Gunn used to guard, which is a cast iron one. I would say it's, and the post office is built, and then Bradner Smith goes out of business, and we could see when he sold it. I think it's around 1860s would be my rough off the cuff guess. This one's got nice detail. And I'm not a, too well known on Turner Hall, but didn't this burn? 
when when this Turner Hall had a fire, I believe they did not rebuild this steeple. And I think the front's a little different than today, maybe. Uh, so this is the Max Heiner House, one of the oldest wooden buildings in Galena, right next to Abby Hearst House, or opposite the fire department. And this is still vacant. Uh, someone else had mentioned that, that they still have their steeple because they took that off and it's now looked like a castle. And that, that might have been a maintenance issue, you know, your wood not having money to maintain it through the years, through, through rot and weathering and rain and the whole thing. Uh, Feltz House has the Italianate building, but that wasn't how it always looked. There's earlier stereo views where he had a simpler building style, and then he added that to it. He brought uh, Kramer's building on Main Street. Yes, they've been working on it all through the summer. Uh, he wants to make it into a speakeasy. I, I walked in there while he was there. Uh, Kramer still has the old cash register in there. There's an old iron safe. There's another iron safe. And uh, he has a common door with his neighbor, Sprengelmeyer, who has the store next to it that's next to the old theater. But he had said that, and, and he has all the original jewelry cases. And he wants, he had wanted to, this was when I talked to him a couple months ago, turn that, somehow if they could turn them into part of his bar, you know, put a wooden top on the glass cases. But he's got back ones that go up to the ceiling. He's got front ones. Whether you're able to keep all that, who knows. Well, it had been empty for a while and just deteriorating. It was not as in good a shape as it could have been for, for, for Galena. Um, I've heard that name. He had several buildings on Dewey. Half of them are still not in good shape. One is getting there. Um, okay. There is a, there's a, there's a trap door between these two houses that went down to a lower level. And I don't remember her name. She was just in here the other day. Um, there's a lady who grew up here. Her, it's her grandfather. And he had two little kids, this lady's mother and another, her sister. And he wanted the door shut so the kids couldn't fall through it. And his neighbor said, no, I'm keeping it open. So the one gentleman neighbor closed it, and the guy came out with a gun and shot him on Main Street. And this is like in the 19, 18, 18, 1900s, possibly. And he was only like 30 years old. <laughs> it's not there today, the trap door. But that's one of the murders in Galena. I don't follow murders on mine. Not Tim Dozier does, and Craig does a little. But I'm not interested in it. I'm, I'm <laughs> Mine's old cemeteries, fences. It gets depressing. There's a lady that had two young kids, and she drowned them and buried them down on Ripplinger's Point. And uh, the, you go down the Galena River, and there's like a long reach. It's, it's not far from the Aiken or the Portage. There's a bunch of old house foundations. And uh, she probably did it because her husband had taken off. They didn't have a job. You know, you're a single person with two kids. There might have been other reasons. Could have been mental or health reasons. Uh, that's the worst case. There's other. Uh, so you get on the line. There's another a gentleman shot his wife or killed his wife coming home from drinking right on the other side of Spring Street Bridge at Shirtail Alley. You know, any city is going to have through the years a few. Okay, everybody knows where this is at. So this would totally surprise you, is there used to be stairs from the cheese shop up the bench and from bench up to Prospect early. 
and that was South Alley. So this is where Fian Hall is today, St. Michael's School. These are the two slattery buildings. A.J. Jackson's early, Rigdon's is right here. That's Fecking's over there. These are gone. And that's the banking house, part of it. The banking house used to be like a U. Uh, the current banking house, he says, that's the banking house. But we have pictures where there's another leg that comes out. And we think the left-hand side was the proper banking and the right side was the residence. But the stairs, I mean, they used, and they, had, they used to have a wooden stairs at the end of South Prospect going up to South Street. They used to have a set of wooden stairs from the bottom of Dodge Street up to South Dodge Street, which has never been open as a street. They used to have a, or they still have a set of stairs on Wan Street going up to Shot Tower Hill. Dewey Avenue used to have a set of stairs from Gratiot, a.k.a. Dewey, a.k.a. Broadway, going up to Jackson Street. Are the stairs by the First National Bank still wood from bench to main? Those those have to be newer. Whatever year they have, to, they might be. But these steps are old. Yep, they went all the way from Maine up to Prospect. And it, think, where was the first school? You didn't have buses. You're not taking a horse and carriage. You're going to walk. They must have known Dr. Fowler because they have a picture of his backyard. This is, I keep forgetting her names. Is this, who's the, and it, we have the names of the horses. And today, right over here is Jero has a headstone. I've never looked at it, but if you look over the fence, the previous owner has a headstone that's got some lettering. I've never inquired further of them to see if somebody took it or brought it in from where. There's a few headstones around Galena that are not in cemeteries. Uh, but this is White Street. And Dr. Fowler is a well-known doctor in the early city directories and in newspaper articles. He's not the only one. Dr. Godfrey, Dr. Fowler. Uh, coming up to us, Dr. Logan was my doctor. I don't know. Sorry, I can't hear. This is General Rowley's house on Park Avenue. And it almost looks exactly the same, but he did not build it. Yes. And they they put a fence back up, but I don't know if it's as, doesn't look exactly like that, but it's close. Uh, I don't know where he lived previous. Oh, yes, he did. Because he lived in that little, uh, one of them is uh, the whites grew up in the one that I knew and the Yankees grew up in the other one. And both of those are small, nondescript, a lot smaller houses. See, I lived uh, diagonal up on Ridge Street, past Yankee and Bailey's, on the second house on Ridge next to Georgia Whipple. So it's in the neighborhood. We have a picture of her from somebody had an early school yearbook that we copied at Central. So now you're dating yourself because she wasn't a teacher when I was growing up. But the detail of uh, people that own houses in Galena, if we have old photos, you can use these to either take it back to that period or see how they looked, or you can see a lot more of the carpentry work that, that has been lost. I understand there's a maintenance issue. You know, if you have wood, you got to paint it and there'd be rot over time. But, you know, we lost a lot of the decorative stuff. The eaves used to have a lot more decorative, and there's still plenty that have that. But what a difference. Okay, this address is not correct. I couldn't figure out where this house was. I think now is that this is the workshop's house on Park Avenue in Jackson. They have an addition built out here. They have a covered front entrance, but that's... That's the house with that style because of these houses. I think this is Jackson, not Spring. Some of these on the internet had uh, information on the back. A lot of them do not. 
some of them have the photographer and we can roughly date them through the paper on when these photographers were in business. Here we go, better view. So it's similar to our Bradner Smith uh, post office. Where's the Green, where, Green Street Bridge? Here's the Spring Street Bridge. I believe the cheese shop, because it's always that distinctive. Uh, the Soto House, uh, Warren Street. That's long gone. Whatever that building was, it was a warehouse. Uh, well, this would be that hotel. There was a Burlington Hotel at one time. That building would be right here, the next. Grant's pre-war home that he rented, didn't, never owned. And Old City Summit, uh, Dr. Logan lived there before he moved to his house on Hill. Uh, Logan Wasson, her son still lives in his house and comes around Galena that Dr. Logan lived in on Hill Street. He owns it. Uh, he comes out periodically. Dr. Logan's grandson owns Dr. Logan's house on Hill Street. This one I threw in because it's it, it's a stereo view, and it's a hotel by a Rockford photo company, and it no longer exists, but it, the detail, and it was there at one time, and it's a stereo view. And they took pictures of farmhouses and farms and tried to sell them, you know, through the years. We got a few more minutes just left, so I'm going to see if we were close to the end. Prospect Street, where the gentleman went off the side, right about here, I think. Because this is uh, Cindy Pebble's sister's Finnick house, where he bought and had the IOF hall moved. That's a stereo view is why it's in there. Uh, it's a more modern one, I believe. Um, but it's a good picture of his house on Bethelier. Uh We can't quite see, but you gotta know where the photo studios were. This is Hill Street. This is Main Street. That's the Candy Kitchen. And this has to be the VFW today because the ads tell us that they had their studio where a building was there. It says Lamberson and James photographers. They were on the top floor. Ian, look at it. It's my graphic.